now everything's in the wrong order.
He has risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Normandy on this glorious, wonderful Easter morning. So glad to have everyone with us this morning, whether you're here in the sanctuary or whether you're joining us online. Uh, we have people worshiping with us online all around the world already today. So, so that's a wonderful thing that we can be in ministry and share this glorious opportunity to worship the resurrected Christ this day. I just invite you to try to set aside all the other stuff, you know, the, the, the lunch that you have to prepare or the family you have to go see later today and just find ourselves here in the presence of the resurrected Christ so we might be filled with the fullness of life this day. Let us worship on this Easter morning. Thank you. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. From the depths of death's despair, he has triumphed over darkness. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In the tomb, he conquered sin and emerged victorious. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The stone rolled away, revealing the promise of new life. Death could not hold him. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. For he is the resurrection and the life. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us proclaim with joy, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, one of the earliest creeds of the Christian church. We do adore thee and praise thee, O Christ, <clears throat> for by your passion, death, and resurrection, you have redeemed the world. Let us pray. O God of eternity, you are present with us because of Christ rising from the dead. And you persist in lifting us to new life in him. We bring to you our prayers for this world in need of resurrection. For ourselves and our families in need of resurrection. Oh God, here we are, both heirs and victims of a birth we did not request and a grave we cannot escape. How shall we live in the meantime? We live as resurrection people. We live, O oh God, to serve you, to make your kingdom known. Bless, guide, and direct each one of us this day. Help us to walk with a 
a special bounce in our step, knowing that regardless of what life may hold, you are sovereign. You have conquered death, hell, and the grave. And because Christ lives, we also shall live. We pray especially, O oh God, for those nations and peoples in strife, for the poor and the impoverished at home and abroad, for refugees, the homeless. We pray for those who are in distress. We pray for those who are dying, those who are battling illness, we pray, Lord, for the persecuted church around the world, for those who keep the faith in the face of evil. We pray, O oh God, that you will strengthen us, grant us that measure of strength, courage, integrity, care, compassion, and love that we need not only this resurrection day, but every day. These things we ask through the risen Christ who taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. People, we offer our time, our talent, our offerings back to our victorious God who holds us in the palm of his hand.
thank you and praise you, O oh God, for all that we have, all that we are, and all that we will yet be by the power of your resurrection spirit working within us. Accept these, our gifts, O oh God, for Normandy's work in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Us is Easter. Easter people, raise your voices. Number 304. Today, we are greeted with the greatest news that has ever been proclaimed. We receive the news that against all odds, the one that was crucified, dead, and buried in a grave is alive. And his resurrection changes everything. It changes everything. Everything. You know, throughout the ages, there have been countless individuals that have come to as religious leaders that have claimed to be have sent by God. But every one of their tombs today is marked occupied. But Christ's tomb stands empty. Christ's tomb stands empty. He is alive, and we are his Easter people. In fact, today, on this Easter morning, we gather with all of our sisters and brothers around the world, millions of us, to worship and glorify the resurrected Savior, to proclaim life abundant, life eternal. And in each of our own ways, we, in our celebration, we, we kind of wonder and question, you know what? What does this mean for me today? You know, I, I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the empty tomb. But we all still wonder, do we not? What does it mean for me today? You know, over my years in ministry, I have had that question asked to me. I could not tell you how many times. Yes, they, they use different words, they say different phrases, but they all are asking the same question over and over again. And every time I hear the question asked, my, my heart kind of cries out. Because I know in the asking of the question, the person does not really know the fullness of the Easter message. They've not received into their lives the, the glorious celebration in life that we receive on Easter. 
they ask the question, they kind of say, you know, Pastor Mark, I, I, it's not a matter of believing or not. I, I believe that Jesus is alive. I believe his tomb stands empty. But does the news of that event of 2,000 so years ago, does it mean anything for me here and now? Does it mean anything in my life right now? You see, my heart cries out when I hear that question because I know, I know they do not know the fullness of life. In the asking of that question, what they're really saying is, is this Easter news just that news? Or is it more than that? Is it saying something? Does it have impact upon my life right now? And I think we all struggle with that question. We all ask that question at different times as we make our way through life. Uh, especially right now in the world in which we find ourselves living in, a world that is growing in tension. A world where there is growing political divide. A world where we're dealing with climate change. A world where we don't even know what's going to happen to, let, later today, let alone tomorrow. And we find ourselves wondering, does this news of Easter, does it have any impact today? Or is it just news? News of an event that took place so long ago that it really doesn't mean anything for us in this moment. This question, this question, I, I want to try to help us answer that question, not just today as we, cont as our, as our, as we celebrate Easter, but, but over the next couple of Sundays we, as we continue our Easter celebration. I want us to try to figure out and answer that question for each of our own lives. And I want to do that by, by taking a look at some of the conversations that the resurrected Christ had. In fact, I, the, these, these conversations that the risen Christ had, I think, can be boiled down to two word sound bites. And we all, we, we all know we live in a soundbite world, right? We, we have we sound bites all over the place. All, we're surrounded by them. So maybe it's even more appropriate for us to, to have Easter's message in sound bites. Sound bites that I think can be just as important and just as impactful in our lives today in this very moment as they did when they first were said. And I want to start by taking a look at the very first of the conversations that the resurrected Christ had. You know, in our scripture passage, which was in our opening video, we, we, we hear, we read how the two Marys are making their way to the tomb. They're going to the tomb to, to finish the, the, the burial process. And as they get to the tomb, they, they have this amazing discovery that the stone that had sealed the tomb earlier has been rolled away and they are greeted by an angel. And the angel says, he's not here. He has risen. And the angel then tells the Marys to go tell Jesus' disciples what they have discovered. In Matthew, in his gospel, he even tells us that the Marys turn to go tell the disciples, and as they turn, they are filled with both joy and fear. They're filled with joy and fear, and they turn and they go to tell the disciples, and they literally run into the resurrected Christ. At first, they don't recognize him. They don't see for who he is, but, but after a moment, they realize who it is, and they they fall to their knees, they fall to the ground at his feet, and they begin to worship him. And Jesus simply says to them, Fear not. Fear not. You know, if you think about it, 
If you think about Jesus' life, all of his teachings, all of the miracles he performed, every part of it is a way of trying to tell his disciples, to train his disciples, to fill them and enable them to not be overcome by fear. He did not want his followers, he did not want his disciples to be overcome with fear. And especially in that moment, they had to have been overcome with fear. I mean, they had been through a lot that week. I mean, just a week earlier, that they watched their teacher, their master, enter into the holy city of Jerusalem and treated like a king with shouts of, Hosanna, Hosanna. But those shouts quickly turned from Hosanna to crucify him. And they watched as he was arrested. They watched as he was beaten. They watched as he was nailed to a cross. They watched as he breathed in his very last breath. They watched as they took his lifeless body down off the cross. They watched as they laid it in a tomb and a stone sealed that tomb. They had to have been filled with fear. They had seen what had taken place and they didn't know what was going to happen next. In fact, they were probably wondering if they were next. But Jesus says to them, fear not. Fear not. We know what it's like to be overcome with fear, do we not? We all deal with fear in some way or another. You know, maybe as, as a young child, we, we have the fear of a nightmare. Or maybe as a, as a teenager, we have a fear of wondering of, what am I going to do with my life? Or, or as, a, as adults, we, we are overcome with the fear of all the decisions and choices we have to make. As an older adult, maybe we have the fear of, when should I retire? Or, when can I retire? We all know fear in our lives. We all know how it can overcome us, overpower us, how it can paralyze us in our lives. We know that fear can cause us to do extraordinary things. In 1947, Vladimir was an accountant in the Russian government. And one night after a little too much drinking, Vladimir discovered and realized that he had misplaced 400 ration cards that were owned by his boss. In post-war Russia, these ration cards were a very valuable commodity. And Vladimir knew that he was in deep, deep trouble for losing these ration cards. In fact, he knew that Siberia probably was in his very near future. Now, Vladimir told his wife what had happened, and Vladimir's wife's advice to him was, make yourself scarce. And so that's what Vladimir did in his fear. He made himself scarce. The next day, his wife called his boss and said that Vladimir had run off with another woman. And for 22 years, Vladimir stayed in his house in hiding. For 22 years, he was overcome with fear of what might take place. That is until 1969 when Vladimir's wife died. And Vladimir had no other choice but to go turn himself in to the authorities. And, and at first the authorities were, were amazed at his story, but they began to investigate what had happened. And they, they came to the discovery that those 400 ration cards were found in Vladimir's desk drawer in his office the day after he disappeared. For 22 years in fear, he did not leave his house Fear causes us to do extraordinary things. Fear has a huge impact upon our lives. 
And don't fool yourself thinking that you don't have fear in your life. We all have some, some type of fear. I mean, Louis Pasteur said that, that, that he was so afraid of germs and dirt that he refused to shake hands with people. It said that, that, that the President and Mrs. Benjamin Harris were, were so afraid of the newfangled electricity that was installed into the White House that they refused to touch light switches. In fact, if there was not someone around to turn the lights out when they went to bed, they would sleep with the lights on. Fear causes us to do extraordinary things. And it is a part of all of our lives. You know, I, I know all of us, we all know the TV psychologist, Dr. Phil, right? We, we all know Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil says this. He says, the important thing to understand is that the number one catalyst in the choices we make is fear. Fear is the number one thing that directs us in the decisions we make. Fear is the number one cause of the choices we live with. Fear. We all deal with it. We all know how destructive fear can be, how paralyzing fear can be. We know how overwhelming it can be, how it can hold us and keep us from life itself. You know, maybe, maybe it's a fear of finances. Or maybe it's a fear of being accepted or not being accepted. Or maybe it's a fear of, of failure. Maybe, maybe it's a fear of violence or injustices. Maybe, maybe it's a fear of you fill in the blank. We all have fear in our lives. We know the effects of fear. We know how it quickens our pulse. We know how it turns our stomachs. We know how it can cause us to gasp for breath. We know how it can rob us of life. Fear can make us live in survival mode, and living in survival mode is no way to live. And there is one fear. There is one fear that every single one of us has in common. There's one fear that we have in common with every human being that has walked this earth. And that fear is death. The fear of death. I mean, we, we all have heard the saying, you know, there's two things in life that you can count on. Death and taxes. And of course, we all know that if you have enough money and can hire the right attorneys, you don't have to worry about taxes, right? But death, death has a perfect batting average. Death comes to every single one of us. We cannot avoid it. I mean, I, I know Pastor Dave is not going to take offense to this, but you know, Pastor Dave is a retired funeral director. How many of us want to go see the funeral director? We don't. I mean, I've worked with a lot of great funeral directors over the years, but, but I'll be honest with you, I don't want to have to work with them. Because going to the funeral director, going to a cemetery, reminds us of the power of death in our lives, and it fills us with fear. But the resurrected Christ says, Fear not. The resurrected Christ says, Fear not. Look at me. I am alive. I'm here. And when he says, Fear not, what he's saying is, I have spent three years with you, teaching you, showing you how to choose faith over fear. For three years I have shown you, I have taught you that I will always be with you, that I love you. For three years I have taught you and shown you over and over again the power of God's kingdom, a kingdom that is here right now. And the resurrected Christ says, fear not. 
And he says those words not just to the Marys, but to you and to me. He says those words to us right now, right here. Fear not. And in saying that, he's saying to us, you don't have to be held hostage to the fears of your thoughts. You don't have to be overcome by the fears of the what ifs. You don't have to be paralyzed by the fears of, of events taking place around us in this world. You do not have to be overcome by fear and robbed of life by them. Fear not, for I am alive. The one and greatest fear in life has been defeated. The tomb stands empty. He's saying to you and to me, we don't have to miss out on the fullness of life, the blessedness of life. Because I am alive. We don't have to settle for being terrorized by fear because that's no way of life anyway. But live in the great knowledge of God's love. Because the tomb stands empty. Fear not. I just wonder, I just wonder in your life right now, in your life right now, where do you need to hear the resurrected Christ saying to you, fear not? Where in your life is fear keeping you from a fullness of life? Where in your life is fear holding you back, holding you down, paralyzing you? Where do you need to hear the resurrected Christ saying, fear not? But also know this, wherever that is, we need to do more than just hear those words. It takes more than just hearing the resurrected Christ saying, fear not. For we need to hear those words and we need to receive into our hearts the resurrected Christ. We need to hear him saying to us, fear not, I am alive, I love you, I'm here for you and with you. And to welcome him into our lives. For when we welcome him into our lives, that's when we become known and aware of, of the power of the empty tomb of Easter. That's when we become aware and, become no, and we, we know that it's not just news of an event that took place 2,000 years ago, but it has impact in our lives right now, right here. So my hope and my prayer is on this glorious Easter morning that each and every one of us, that we might hear the resurrected Christ saying, fear not, and that we might for the first time or for the umpteenth time, receive the resurrected Christ into our lives to be filled with that fullness and that blessedness of life here and now and for all of eternity. The resurrected Christ says to us, fear not. May we receive that news this day and be filled with life itself. Hallelujah. Christ is alive. Will you join with me in our unison prayer? Oh Lord, on this glorious Easter morning, our hearts overflow with praise for the news of the resurrection fills our hearts and spirits. Christ emerged victorious from the grave, bringing hope and life to each of us. It is in the midst of fears that overtake us, paralyzing us, robbing us of life, that we hear the resounding words of the resurrected Christ, fear not. We pray that these two words might penetrate our souls and transform us, not just today, but every day to come, 
May they resonate in, in our hearts that we are empowered to be an Easter people filled with hope, joy, love, and life. An Easter people that share the good news to all around us. Hear this, our prayer, for we lift it in the name of our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you stand as you are able and join us in our closing hymn, Up from the Grave He Arose, it's number 322, and the words are on the screen. Savior truly has risen. His grave stands empty. And in that knowledge, he says to each and every one of us, fear not. Be filled with life here, now, and forever. So hear that message this day and go to proclaim it so all the world might be filled with life. Go forth being Christ's Easter people. Go forth in life. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.